good morning, everyone. Fresh, bright Monday morning. It's absolutely beautiful here in Livermore. Sorry we're a minute late. John forgot to set up the thing. <laughs> Gets him excited. That happens about once every two months. He's, oh, I forgot to set you up. And this does not happen without him, <laughs> with the guy behind the curtain. Today, let me tell you what we're going to do, and then I'm going to run through some stuff like I always do. I'm going to show you how I actually piece the heart together, this one to be exact. And there are some tricks and tips, and it's screwed up on me, okay? So I will be able to show you how to undo the messes you might find yourself into. Oh, maybe it never happens to you. It happens to me all the time. Anyways, I want to show this cartoon I found. I've seen this a hundred times. I don't know if I've shared it before, but this is what's going to happen at Houston at the end of the month <laughs> with everybody with all their um, stuff. You know who the quilter is, and it's just, it's a plethora of color on the carousel. There you go, plethora of color on the carousel. <laughs> so I really, really like that. Okie doke. So... Let me tell you what just happened yesterday, this weekend, just to, while people are logging on. Uh, yesterday, my, my granddaughter is in Cali All Stars, and it's cheerleading. And if you've ever wondered what cheerleading is today, think of it as it's going to be added as an Olympic sport. So we were there, and what was really cool was that I looked up, and kitty corner from me was Debbie Stevens, who does all the pre-work to my retreat. I thought she was looking at me. She was looking at somebody else. And then I texted her like, oh, I can't come over. I'm with my peeps. And she texts back, huh? What are you talking about? And she didn't realize I was there, okay? Her granddaughter is on the same team as Lennox, and they're in the same little pod. They group them. In, I don't know what the word is. Uh, somebody could correct me if you come up with the word, but a little pod. And... Um, she and Lennox are in the same pod, and Lennox is a back, and I believe she is a base. So it's very, very, very fun. Then also, as you know, I'm having to redo my kitchen under duress because of all the mice poop that's under the counters. So Adair said she would come over and help me go through stuff. And thank goodness she did, because I thought I could handle it myself. I, I would have been crying, and by the end of the day, my back hurt so bad I couldn't stand it. And there were only two things that she thought I was insane to hang on to, but they just have real sentimental meaning to me. And then I would not have done this. And the reason I'm telling you this was somebody else saw it and they go, I wouldn't have thought of this. As we emptied out the cupboards, and this is all going to start after Houston, but I wanted to get it done before. We went and put blue tape or blue posty notes at the empty cupboards. And so like... To the left of the dishwasher, there's still, that's all of my utensils, cooking utensils, and then pots and pans that we will be using. Um, but where the tape is, those puppies are empty. So I thought that was a marvelous trick of hers that I would not have thought of. And, and the person who said, oh, that's just like you to think of that, Sujata. And I'm like, no, that's not just like me. <laughs> and if John and I had been doing it, it would have ended in divorce. <laughs> Let's just put it there. And the thrift shop's getting new stuff. But, wow, let me tell you one more little side note before we get into quilting, and we will. Um, my mom, you know, like, you know the pictures of Jesus where the light is coming down on him? He usually has a baby in his arm or whatever. My mom always called those Jesus lights. And periodically, with the weather is cooperating one way or another, you will see Jesus lights coming down. Well, I will tell you, yesterday I saw this, or Saturday, I don't remember, and it stopped me in my tracks because we had Jesus lights in our living room right on my mom's chair. So that was kind of a stunning thing that happened this weekend. So I think the G, I think Dee is telling me, get moving on this kitchen remodel. <laughs> okay, so you've been sending me some pictures to my Gmail, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at Gmail. And Gail sent a picture of this tie, and she said, we all need to just slow down and enjoy the art of the tie. <laughs> 
Isn't that great? Isn't that great? I, I have no idea who put this tie out, but it's certainly worth a laugh. Um, and then Joanne, oh, Joanne, one of our Aussies, just finished this up. And, and uh, Joanne's calling it um, Lockdown Reflection, and it really stretched her to do this. What I want to show you is the second slide of this. You know, when we did our slow stitching, look to the bottom right how there's that fish. And that fish incorporates the print that's around the border. She, she brought it in as a piece, and I thought that was really lovely. And then I love the words she has in there. So, you know, Joanne, if you learn something super new because of all this, that makes me really happy. And I know I'm learning tons, tons with our lockdown class continued, our virtual world guild. And I thank you for your patience if I screw something up. Okay, then, okay, so Liz or Elizabeth got a ribbon and she was, she sent me this picture maybe Friday uh, with our BOM and then it, if this doesn't get good enough, she got viewer's choice. <laughs> so I think viewer's choice is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful prize to win because it just validates everything. So congratulations, Elizabeth, congratulations. Okay, Christy, Christy does not want another quilt, or not, not, she's in one. She didn't know what to do with the neckties. So she's calling this from neckties to bow ties. And she got the pattern, she was going through that little book that I love so much, the 110 pieced blocks or whatever, and she thought, perfect, bow ties. And so what she's made here, and I forgot all about these, but you know, we could do it on our bed because the top of our bed is white too. Uh, she made a bed runner. She was very concerned about putting it on her long arm and doing the quilting, but no problem at all, not at all. And it was the easy block tool that she used. I love that little book. And that card deck that we're working with is kind of a, spin off of it, but I'm glad I have both. Let's just put it that way. Okay, then Pam sent me this, mm, I think last week, and this is Silk Ties, uh, the little um, six-sided block at the bottom, and then the, the crow. So, and I believe it's on cotton, okay? But it looks like we picked up another ribbon. Ribbons are fun. All right, and some of us don't know as well as others. <laughs> Okay, then Joan, oh, Joan, this is silk, if I, if I am, um, if I am remembering, and this is her mother. So let's take a look at the picture of her mother. It's beautiful. Okay, hold on. That is one smashing, beautiful woman. Let's go back. Hey, kitty. Our friends here, our mascots here. Oh, then then Inger sent me this because Pepe, Pepe I wish I know how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. P-E-P-A-I um, sent me a picture of this particular quilt. And it was so small, I didn't want to show it how I received it because this had been um, a... This has been a, a ribbon winner, okay? And what she did was she worked with uh, a computer program, EQ8, and you know, Quilter Selects has a wonderful one if you're wanting to jump into all of this. And um, it's called Design and Quilt. And it's, it seems expensive at the beginning, but then when you do all the add-ons with the other programs, it actually comes in less and there's tons of, um, classes you can upload fabric in it and have not have it cost more money etc but she put little crystals in it and i you'll be able to see, i think you can kind of see it on the border i think kind of but thank you um inger for sending these pictures just look at that no wonder you've scored a lot of ribbons i mean 
the quilting on this is phenomenal. And just now I'm starting to see the quilting, and I've showed it the other days, when it, things go under something. So like on the lower left, the way that quilting goes under the black and then it goes back on top. And then we've got George Sicilano. I know I'm, I'm, no, I'm slaughtering your name, George, and I'm so sorry. Um, I have been an admirer of your work for decades. Margot sent me this. This is silk. Oh, should I mention it's 22 inches by 22 inches? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right. All right. Let's get into today's lesson, and then I've got a really exciting field trip I'm going to tell you about that we're going to be taking together next Wednesday, and it's going to require a little bit of work from you, but nothing big. All right? So... Here we go. I will be watching for questions. I'll be taking notes. Um, and again, I screwed up in this. I did. And so I'll show you how I fixed it. I did two things that were naughty. Let's go. I just totally love this block. I think it is, it is so, so sweet. sweet. It, it is, is so, so simple. simple. Two flying geese, two rectangles, two half square triangles, finishing at eight inches. I would not have found it if I hadn't gotten my hands on this particular card deck. I've never seen this heart before. I'm sure it's existed, you know, and all that good stuff. But I, boy, it just kept coming back to that. Here is one of them that I pieced together. Love it. Okay, so what's important to me in piecing this thing together? I want the bottom part to line exactly up. And I want the flying geese to not only line up, but then come exactly right into the two rectangles. Now, here's my deal. If this floats a little bit, I don't care. I care if the tips get cut off. That's when my sensibilities get knocked off. This one is pretty good. I, it might float just a little bit, but you'd never know just based on the fabric that I'm using. Okay, so let me put that away. And let's talk about how to go about doing this. Okay, I want to tell you, I started recording this before this, and I noted there was a real big fat problem in it. So let's talk about what that is. Up here, with this flying geese, you can see, let me get my pointer, you can see how it doesn't come to the corner. Well, it's not, you're not gonna get good precision if that's the case. Whereas look at here, it comes exactly to the corner. So I don't even think with cotton I would try and do this. You just don't want to stretch and pull on these blocks because even though we've got the facing on it, the fabric prep, they're still bias, okay? So it has to be pieced correctly. Also, I don't know what that is up there. But anyways, I went to my design wall and I grabbed that one. Let's look at the difference, okay? See that one? Uh-uh. That one? Nice. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom because that's what I do when I make this block. Oh, before we get started, I want to talk about pins. This is not the time to skimp on good pins. You're going to be pinning a lot, and with silk, I'm pinning in ways that I have not pinned before. But this is a pin that I got 100 years ago. And it was probably like 500 pins for a dollar, you know? And it's got a plastic head on it. You do not want that. First, first and foremost, with a plastic head, if your iron hits it, it's gonna melt on your iron, on your fabric, whatever. Also, you can see the pin part of it is much thicker. And I don't really care for my pins being this long either. That, I, that distresses me, all right? So. Starting down here, in a perfect world, this would go to the pink. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. And this will go to the blue. Let's see if I'm lucky. Ugh, go buy a lottery ticket. If they were both to the pink or if they were both to the blue, I would go back and repress one of them. Just one. That's it. That way you've got seams that are nestling in opposite direction. I don't care if it's pressed to the light. I don't care if it's pressed to the dark. I've sewn so carefully these seams that when I'm 
on the light side, it's pressing against light fabric. So this dark will not shadow through. Because I want this to line up, that's what I'm going to pin first. And I'm, I'm taking so much precaution with this, way more than I do with uh, cottons, because there's just so much room for slippage and all that. Okay, I can see here that this is lining up. All right, take one of these great glass head pins, I'm going to sneak it in a quarter of a quarter, about a sixteenth of an inch before the seam. And let me see if I can get this down a little bit more. I guess I really can't. Well, actually, I think I can. Let's take this down. Let's do this. Okay, so we can really get in there and see what's happening. Okay. And then I'm going to... Go here. Now see, just even by moving it, this thing slipped. Right here. And then I'm gonna sneak a peek this way. And it's lined up, so I'm ever so happy. I'm also gonna drop a pin right here. Normally, I only pin where seams align. So this is a this is kind of a, a, a new game of patience for me. And and again, these ties are all biased, and even though it's been fabric prepped, you still want to be so careful. Okay. Then another, okay, this is the seam I'm gonna be sewing. And I'm gonna remember that because it's the pink seam. But also, let's go up a little bit. I am going to Make sure that this is aligning down here. And that just means so the thing isn't going cockeyed. So I drop a pin in here. Not gonna sew it. Not gonna sew it. Okay, I might even drop one over here to keep it from shifting. And then we're gonna move over to the sewing machine. And this is what I would suggest in this case. All right, again, I say this every single time. Make sure you've got yourself a single hole throat plate, all right? Especially if you have one of these fancier machines that has wider feed dogs. If you're working on a Bernina and you've got the dual feed system and you can see here it says 37D, make sure you have engaged the back, uh, the dual feed function. Otherwise, it's gonna be wonky on you. Again, I have a 60 weight thread on top and 80 weight on the bobbin. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to just start sewing. Oh, first of all, I'm starting from the side that I really want to have aligned up, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to about, oh, I don't know, 430, whatever. And, oh, the other thing, and then I'm going to just sew from here to here. I'm going to check and see if it's lined up. And if it's not, then I'm going to um, pull out that seam and do it again. The other thing that I want to show you is where I'm pinning here, I'm going underneath where the quarter inch is. I'm going underneath. I'm not pinning out here, out here, and it's really easy to do, but pin where you're going to be stitching. All right. I also, on this particular machine and foot, there is this line right here. That truly is my quarter inch. That's it. So I lead in here and I don't pay a whole lot of attention with what's there. Because let's take a look here. If I'm, if I'm right there where it is, okay, I'm going to sew. There is a little bit of fabric peeking out from this side over here. All right, I am going over a bunch of seams and a bunch of stuff there. So I might very well take my presser foot and loosen up the pressure on it so it can easily slide over it, all right? So let's go. And it would be real easy to sew the wrong seam, so pay attention. Oh, wait, let me cut it. I shouldn't have gone that far. I should have just gone like to there, all right? 
Let's take it apart. I'm gonna move to the other camera so we can see better. All right, let's take it apart and see if we're good. Yes, we are good. So now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna clear my machine, go back to the regular stitch length and um, go from there. So here we go. Oh, I shouldn't have taken out all those pins. Whoops. When a demo goes awry. Come on, baby. Oh, you know what? I cleared everything and it took the presser, it changed the presser foot. Oh, this is not also the time to go to the horse races. Take your time, all right? Okay, let's go back over to this camera and yay! So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually press this seam open. And the reason I'm gonna press it open is because there's so much bulk there, all right? So basically when I have, you know, more than just a couple seams coming together, I will consider pressing open, absolutely. And I just do it from the back side. I might even put a clapper on it for a few seconds. And if it looks puffy, I will throw some starch on it too. I, I'm really beating this thing into submission, all right? That looks pretty good, yeah. All right, now it's this. This is more trickery, all right? This is way more trickery. Let me just get this out of the way. I am gonna cut off this bunny ear. I'm surprised it wasn't done before. I am going to line up these two seams right here. The problem now is that the seams are all going in the same direction. And that just makes the challenge a little more exciting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peek, call it peek and roll, peek. Okay, I'm peeking, that's not right. You can see that the, this one is off a little bit. So I'm gonna peek and roll it again. And because the seams are going in the same direction, you can't get in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And nestle things where they lock together, the seams. There we go. Probably should be a little bit more forward. Now, they say don't run over machine uh, pins with your machine. You really shouldn't. But in the case of this microsurgery, which is almost what's going on here, um, you kind of have to. So you just slow it down look at all those layers there oh that's going to make my machine mad so i'm going to have to loosen the foot again pressure so let's take a look okay yay that's good i'm also going to drop a pin in down here make sure those corners are lined up and it's it, it, not that it really matters but i do kind of want these to be lined up too, just to make sure everything is getting in position properly. This is the seam that we will be um, sewing. And yes, there's a little bulk here. I am not going to worry about that. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine. It's so funny, I couldn't even remember how to do this with these all these extra cameras. John had to help me. All right, so let's Lengthen up the, let's lengthen up the stitch. Wait a minute, yeah, that's good. Let's lengthen up the stitch. I think 4.0 is about what you want. I'm watching right there where that little thing is, where that little indentation is. I've got the light down as low as I can get it. I can't turn it off, I just can't. And get this thing done properly. Yep, it's good, it's good. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get my stitch length to regular length and come down here. And my regular length is 2.50. I, I don't know if that's a default for all machines. My guess is probably. 
and then go over where you were where you were before okay One of the cool things on the machine is if you have messed with the stitch length, is the little number that tells you it's 2.0 or 2.5.0 or whatever, it changes to yellow. So you can just look up and know whether your stitch length has um, been messed up or not. All right. Yippee! Okay, I'm going to press it again. Open. Right. And this demo is going a little long. I'm sorry, but there's all this makes up for other days when the demo goes too short, right? <laughs> I'm banking it. Okay. Open, go like this. Close my clapper. Throw starch on if there's a side that's being not nice. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two guys together. Oh, and remember, this was the sari fabric, and it was kind of a different pink, and I felt so lucky when I found this tie that kind of pulled that pink in. And believe it or not, you got a pin. Normally, I wouldn't pin just sewing two rectangles together, but it's just a slip and slide. I, you know, and, and maybe some of you are sitting there thinking, so why bother? Why bother working with silk? because the results are so beautiful. And I appreciate it when you guys are posting stuff on the site. Okay, back we go. Nothing too exciting about this. So let's just sew it. I can see the things right down there. Again, ties are on biases and yes, fabric prep is good, but you still have to be respectful. Because this one is pressed open, okay, and this one is pressed open, I am going to press this guy open. And then I'll show you how to pin. That's the way I wanted it, all right? I would suggest when you're working on this, you turn off the TV and you put on some music that's just calming and soothing and stuff like that. Like I uh, will listen to the Yellowstone track from Netflix. That's lovely. King, King's, Queen's Gambit has a nice soundtrack too. Okay. And there we go. There we go. This is a little bit bigger. That means that that bias is stretched a little bit. Um, we'll be able to make it work. I'm not that worried about it. So what I'm going to do to get this and this together, come in the back side here. This is how I do points. I come up. There's my pin. Hope you can see it. I'm going to come right down here. I didn't, yeah, oh, shoot, I, I just pulled it out. That was stupid. Back to the side. Like that. Squish it together. Um, this looks like it might be more than a quarter, but no, that's about right. You guys talk to yourself, too. I'm so enlightening myself with my own conversations. <laughs> See that line's going just beautifully straight across. What I'm going to do here, I've got a problem. Okay, this is kind of big. I would prefer that that bigness were on the bottom and not sewing on the top. So I'm going to go and do some big stitches right here, stop, continue pinning, and then, t well, Actually, I'm going to put the pin in here. Just stop and then go back and flip it over and sew it on the other side. We'll see if that works. Actually, this is the first time this has happened. So now I've got a problem solved. All right. So let's get ourselves 
nice big long stitch and I'm going to start right in front of this mess here and so notice how I'm holding this okay and that is going to stay in whoops until the very last second that's one of the reasons I love the Bernina's quarter inch foots because they're open in here a lot of other brands are not that open okay let's cut it and see what we have going on I'm thinking a Dion Warwick song say a little prayer for me <laughs> Now what I'm going to do, because I've got to ease this stuff in, I am going to ease in with pins. All right, if I were working with cotton, I might just make a little, give it a little tug, a little pull. Mm -mm, not here. And I am actually going to pin all the way down to the end so that when I put this on the bottom side, these seams can't flip over. See, this side's perfect. Actually, I'm glad this happened right now. All right. Um, get the stitch length down to where it needs to be. Okay, there we go. I'm turning it upside down so that the fat part is on the bottom. Is it supposed to turn that one on? I might even drop another pin in right there. You just saw Alex with no makeup. <laughs> Fat part to the bottom. Always, whenever possible, even with my even feed. Because my fattest part is my bottom, and that's how I remember it. Okay. It is giving me a little bit of atti attitude. Okay, let's see what we've got going on here. Yay! And it even eased in. Now, let's talk about which way to press here. In the case of this, these are the strong guys because they've got all the seams in it, you know? This is the weakling side right here. So I'm going to press to the weakling side. I'm going to press from the top. Make sure there are no tucks in it. Put my clapper on it. And then there you go. I will do the exact same clapper. I'll do the exact same thing that I did here, down here, and it too will want to press. Oh, you don't ever want that. You want to make sure you got it nice and flat. You know, you think like stuff like that doesn't matter. Yeah, it really does. Okay. So we'll just sew this on down here, and there is one of the little heart blocks. Another one ready to go. So here it is again finished, and you can see that it did ease in just lovely. By the way, I figured out what was wrong about the echoing. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a little exclamation point. That means maybe you should stop and figure it out, but I did. One thing I didn't show you in here. Okay, look at this block, this one right here. This, did I get it up there? Yeah, this one. This was the original piece to this heart. And when I got to that, uh-uh, you can't use that. That line has to go perfectly to the 90-degree uh, corner, perfectly. So this puppy just got tossed. I wasn't even going to try and fake it. Uh, cotton, I might have tried, but that is pretty bad right there. So just bye-bye, right? Eleanor burns it over your shoulder. Okay, so here's the deal. We're going on a field trip this next Wednesday. 
it is going to be at a different time. That would be Wednesday the 18th, right? October 18th. And it's going to be at 11 o'clock. Now you have to pay attention here a little bit. We are going um, Ricky virtually. Well, actually, it's pretty much me because he's overseas with meeting Hugo's parents. Textile Talks is doing a thing on the quilt show. And Textile Talks, remember we had a... a we talked about this in the past. It During the pandemic, when it started, uh, Sakwa got together the International Lincoln Museum, Quilt Museum, Surface Quilting Design and Quilt Alliance got together and thought, hey, let's just bring present presentations to our audience via Zoom, you know, a little different than this, but Zoom, and we'll all take turns. Basically, we'll come up with one a month each organization. Well, even though the pandemic, it's all loosened up and everything, it's still going on. And I was so excited, and Ricky was too, when they asked us, would we please present? Here's what you need to do. Mark your calendar for 11 o'clock Pacific time Wednesday. All right, I'm a little nervous about it, all right? But I think it'll be fun. It'll give you a breath of who we are and what we're doing. And I can take questions at the end about TQS, whatever, thequiltshow.com, whatever you want. Okay, so you've got to um, pre-register, all right? And it's free. It is free, but I that's how you're going to get your Zoom link. So you got to pre-register, and I'll show you how, I'll tell you how to do that in a minute. And then it's going to take you to this form. Nobody's asking for money. They will not sell their your data or use it for anything else. There's a box, and I'm sorry it's not here, um, where you can check you want to get newsletters from them or not. And basically, Lilo's all um, involved with this. The newsletter's nothing other than, hey, this week it's XYZ, register here. And I asked, why are you doing the registering? And it's to kind of keep out the riffraff. <laughs> We are the riffraff. <laughs> so here, there's two ways you can do it. In the newsletter, there's a link you can go to, the quiltshow.com newsletter. In the blog at the quiltshow.com, there's a link you can go to, and just that little form will come up. And then what will happen is, then it will go to your, in. I went and did it, all right? The little thing will go into your inbox, and then that will get you into the Zoom at 11 o'clock Pacific time this next Wednesday, the 18th. All right. So we're going on a field trip. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We've worked really hard on the presentation, a lot of beautiful quilts and all that. Oh, wait, there's one other way you can get in. We have a QR code that you can um, use. And so I'm going to put up, as I say goodbye, I'm going to put up the QR code and I'm not going to turn this off the computer for about a minute or two. So you can go and grab your phones and just go through it. Yes, Rondi, it will be recorded. It will be recorded. In fact, if you go to Textile Talks, uh, you can see, or YouTube, YouTube, you can see them. So that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm very excited about it. Um, Kristen and Lilo and I have worked really hard on it, and I will tell you they have worked harder than me, but I think that the presentation's gonna be a little classy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I think that's it. Any other questions? I don't think so. Again, I saw. I apologize for that cancellation issue. I hope it cleans up when this, goes, when this uh, resides on YouTube permanently. It's dumb, dumb. Okay, so um, see you Wednesday. Wear comfortable shoes, field trip, and here is the QR code. Have a great one, everybody.
So I tried it and it worked. It works? Okay, good. I'll leave it on for another minute, you guys. And if you can't get your phone, just go back to this and then scoot to the end, everyone. Or go to the links provided on the website and newsletter. Have a great one. See you with a backpack on Wednesday at 11 o'clock Pacific.